Hello and welcome back. In my previous video, I had seen what is the analytic function, enter function, harmonic function. Today's goal of this lecture. Today, I will see what is the relation between analytic function and power series and Taylor series. This is actually today's goal of this lecture. Actually, analytic function means in my previous video, I have seen a function fz is said to be analytic at a point a where a belongs to domain of the function if f is differentiable every point of the ball containing a such that b of a are equal to z b z such that z b modulus of z minus a less than r for some r greater than 0. And when a function is analytic in the whole complex plane then this is called entire function. I have seen some example of analytic function and entire function. Sin z cos z e to the power z actually who is as a Taylor series ex this is example of analytic function and not only analytic function this is actually example of entire function because this type of function is analytic in the whole complex plane. Also, uh, polynomial function, rational function, constant function. This is an example of analytic function. But if we consider fz equal to mod z square, in my previous video I have seen, this is differentiable at the point z equal to, only z equal to 0. Otherwise, it is not differentiable. So, this is example of not analytic function. Also in my previous video I have seen what is the harmonic function. Harmonic function means if fz equal to u plus iv then u satisfy the Laplace equation and v is the harmonic conjugate of u and if, a, if u satisfy the harmonic condition Laplace equation then we can tell this function is harmonic function. And my, in my previous video, I had seen analytic imply harmonic and harmonic imply analytic. And since analytic means it is differentiable in the neighborhood. So, del u del x del u del y del v del x del v del y all partial derivative would be continuous and it would be satisfied the shear equation because it is the condition of differentiability. If a function is differentiable, then all partial derivative are, would be continuous and shear equation would be satisfied. In my previous video, I had seen this, uh, this concept briefly. If you don't see my previous video at first, I will highly recommend you, please see my previous video at first. At first. Then today's video would be so easy. Next, I will see at first, what is the polar equation of shear equation because if you know the polar equation of shear equation then some function it would be so easy to find if a function be satisfy shear equation or not okay let's say the what is the polar equation of shear equation what is the cauchy riemann equation for polar form? At first, calculate on self. This is very easy. The cauchy riemann equation of polar form is del u del r equal to 1 by r del v del theta and del v del r equal to minus 1 by r del u del theta. So, the cauchy riemann equation of polar form is del u del r equal to 1 by r del v del theta 
and del V del R equal to minus 1 by R del U del theta. Then a prime z equal to ux plus ivx. If you put the value, then this would be 1 by e to the power i theta del u del r plus i del v del r. And this is the value of a prime z. Therefore, the value of a prime z would be 1 over e to the power i theta del u del r plus i del v del r. Now as for example, I will see fz equal to z to the power n is analytic and find it derivative. And I will prove z to the this poly, z to the power n means obviously polynomial. I will prove z to the power n is analytic by I will prove it bipolar form. I will prove this is satisfy Cauchy Riemann equation, but I will use the polar form for this. Consider z equal to r e to the power i theta k because I will use the polar form. Then this is r e to the power i theta to the power n and r e to the power i theta to the power n means this is equal to r to the power n e to the power i n theta. And e to the power i n theta means cos n theta plus i sin n theta. Then del u del r means n r to the power n minus 1 cos n theta. And del u del theta means minus n r to the power n sin n theta. And del v del r means, del v del r means n r to the power n minus 1 sin n theta and del v del theta means n r to the power n cos n theta. Then del u del r notice del u del r equal to 1 by r del v del theta and del v del r means minus 1 by r del u del theta. Therefore, notice here the Cauchy Riemann equation has satisfied del u del r equal to 1 by r del v del theta and del v del r equal to minus 1 by r del u del theta. Yet the Cauchy Riemann equation has satisfied. CR equation be satisfied and notice del u del r, del, del u del theta, del v del r, del v del theta both are continuous. So obviously the function fz be differentiable. I hope my all viewers have understood why the function fz is differentiable and it is differentiable everywhere in the complex plane. Everywhere in the complex plane. And since it is differentiable everywhere in the complex plane, that implies fz is not only analytic, fz is entire function. I hope my all viewers have understood this is why fz is entire function. This here since I have used the polar form therefore the equation to find the Cauchy Riemann equation it is it would be very easy. So I have used here the polar form. So which method you will be used? This is your knowledge and derivative of this function is a prime z is now a prime z equal to 1 by e to the power i theta del u del r plus i del v del r. Now put the value 1 by e to the power i theta del u del r means minus n 
आठ टू दी पार एन कॉस एन थीटा प्लस आई डेल वी डेल आर मीन्स एन आठ टू दी पार एन माइनस वन साइन एन थीटा देन दिस इज इक्वल टू एन आठ टू दी पार एन माइनस वन इ टू दी पार आई थीटा एंड दिस इज कॉस एन थीटा प्लस आई साइन एन थीटा एंड दिस वैल्यू इज एन आठ टू दी पार एन माइनस वन वन ओवर इ टू दी पार आई थीटा एंड कॉस एन थीटा प्लस आई साइन एन थीटा मीन्स इ टू दी पार आई एन थीटा देर फोर दिस इज इक्वल टू एन आठ टू दी पार एन माइनस वन इ टू दी पार आई एन माइनस वन थीटा एंड दिस इज एन आर इ टू दी पार आई थीटा टू दी पार एन माइनस वन एंड दिस मीन्स एक्चुअली एन जेड टू दी पार एन माइनस वन I hope my all viewers have understood a prime z equal to n z to the power n minus one. Okay. Oh, okay. the theorem is if f z equal to the power series a n z n, which has a radius of convergent r, then this f is actually analytic on this. That is your mod z less than r. That means if f is analytic function. Then there exists a power series of radius r, and the picture would be such type. Consider here I have considered a n z n. That means the point is zero. Inside this point, the function is analytic. Here the radius of convergence is r. For this, consider the sequence. If n z equal to the power series n equal to zero to infinity a n z n, however, obviously each f n is analytic. Next, define f n z equal to n equal to zero to infinity a n z n. Here, each f n is analytic because this is the polynomial function. Therefore, f n Converges to A uniformly on mod z less than R, and since A F is uniform limit, of an analytic function. So, if is analytic, on mod z less than r. Therefore, if there exists a power series with radius of convergent r, then obviously the limit. If the series converges to f uniformly, where f is the uniform limit of this analytic function, since f is the uniform limit of this analytic function, then obviously f is analytic. That means that means if there exists a power series, then there exists always analytic function f. Where f is equal to this power series, and this power series is always convergent within the radius within the boundary radius of convergent R, and when mod z greater than R, then the series always be divergent. And in this region. Where the function f z is equal to the power series, then f is analytic in this region. Okay. Well, the name of analytic is holomorphic. Holomorphic is always imply analytic. 
and if f is holomorphic means analytic on the neighborhood u that means for all a belongs to u a prime a, a prime a exists that means f is differentiable on the neighborhood u and if f is holomorphic then a prime is holomorphic f double prime is also holomorphic and for all n belongs to integer f and z exist and this is true for all z belongs to u therefore since for all n n belongs to z f and z exist so we can tell for this analytic means so analytic means there exist always be locally power series why because notice here analytic means there exist a power series at the point a around a with radius r that means there exist a power series in this neighborhood so analytic means always be locally power series but when the function be entered that means there exist globally power series and this concept locally power series and globally power series this concept actually very important here when a function be analytic then there exist a locally power series and when a function be entered then there exist a globally power series obviously there exist a power series with centered a of the form n equal to 0 to infinity a n z minus a to the power n that means analytic means always there exist a power series where r is the radius of convergent and this is true because all derivative of f analytic means all derivative of f is exist and uh, here in complex analysis this power series would be equal to the taylor series means actual idea is let f be a function which is defined from a b to r which be a function we say that capital f is real analytic if for x not belongs to a b we can find a power series for each x not belongs to a b that means we can find a power series of centered x not and the series is look like a n x minus x not to the power n whose radius of convergence is the r and if with x not minus r comma x not plus r intersection ab is actually the power series a n x minus x not to the power n i hope my all viewers have understood if a function be real analytic then there exist always be a power series with center x not of radius r okay and uh, here in complex analysis this power series would be equal to the taylor series that means analytic means there exist always be locally power series and this power series is actually equal to the taylor series why let's see why in analytic means locally power series always equal to the taylor series as for example if we consider cos x and consider the point a equal to 0 then 
the taylor series of cos x equal to f0 plus f prime 0 into x plus f double prime 0 times x square over 2 factorial plus f triple prime 0 into x square cube over 3 factorial and this is cos 0 means 1 f prime 0 means sin 0 which is 0 f double prime 0 means cos 0 which is 1 x square over 2 plus f triple prime 0 also would be 0 and if, uh, f to the power 4 0 equal to would be 1 this would be x to the power 4 over 4 whole factorial this would be continue this is the taylor series of cos x i hope my all viewers have understood now i will see if fx be analytic then till now i have understand there exists a power series whose radius of convergence be r and these power series is equal to the taylor series why let's see the theorem consider the function f who is defined from minus r to r to capital R where r capital R is the radius of convergence and this f is the limit of this function and f is differentiable on the region minus r to r. Then since f is limit of the power series so f prime would be n equal to series the series n equal to 1 to infinity n a to the power n x to the power n minus 1 and this f prime also would be differentiable and inductively we will see if we differentiate again and again this would be continue now consider the taylor series Here I have considered the power series a n x to the power n. That means here the point a equal to 0. Now consider the Taylor series and consider the Taylor series is denoted as tf who is equal to n equal series n equal to 0 to infinity fn 0 over n factorial x to the power n. Now I will see this tf actually the power series. That means this series is related to a n x to the power a. Observe that when x equal to 0, when x equal to 0, then since f is equal to the power series a n x to the power n, therefore when x equal to 0, then f 0 equal to a 0 a prime 0 equal to series n equal to 1 to infinity a n a to the power n x to the power n minus 1 and a prime 0 equal to a 1 a double prime 0 would be n equal to 2 to infinity n into n minus 1 a n x to the power n minus 2 then I will get f double prime 0 equal to 2 a 2 and obviously this would be continue then I will get f n 0 equal to n factorial a n that imply a n equal to f n 0 over n factorial power series a n x to the power n by this expression here i have got this is equal to f n 0 over n factorial 
x to the power n and notice this is actually the taylor series tf this is equal to taylor series therefore that means if fz is analytic at the point z0 then there exists a series such type f z not plus f prime z not z times z not plus f double prime z not over 2 factorial times z minus z not whole square so on. And this type of series is called Taylor series for f z around the point z not. That means function is analytic means this function is equal to the Taylor series. That means if f be a holomorphic function on an open set u which contains c then the taylor series of the function f at the point a is defined by summation n equal to 0 to infinity fn a over n factorial z minus a to the power a that means from this idea we can conclude that if f belongs to AU here AU means analytic function and BAR contain U then always there exists a Taylor series A which converges to A absolutely and uniformly the Taylor series A converges to A absolutely and uniformly on a compact subset of BAR. I have my all, all viewers have understood this process. Okay. Oh, well. Example find the Taylor series of the function fz equal to 1 over 2 plus z around the point z equal to 0. We all of us know the geometric series 1 over omega equal to 1 plus omega plus omega square so up to so on, and this is. Uh, equal to actually the zero metric series n equal to 0 to infinity omega to the power n and this is true for absolute value omega less than 1 then here since we have to find the Taylor series around the point z equal to 0 therefore the Taylor series around the point z equal to 0 is fz equal to f0 plus f prime 0 over 1 factorial z minus 0 plus f double prime 0 over 2 factorial z minus 0 whole square so on. Then since here fz equal to 1 over 2 plus z that means this is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 minus 1 over 1 minus minus z over 2 and around the point z equal to 0 consider w equal to minus z over 2. Since if z equal to this, notice 1 minus omega means this geometric series. Here consider omega equal to minus z over 2. Then since this is the geometric series n equal to 0 to infinity omega to the power n and here I have considered it omega equal to minus z to the power minus z over 2. Therefore this is half n equal e series n equal to 0 to infinity minus z over 2 to the, two to the power n and this is equal to minus 1 to the power n z to the power n over 2 to the power n plus 1 and this is true notice geometric series is true for absolute value of omega less than 1 and since here omega equal to minus z over 2 therefore this is true for mod z less than 1 and this is the Taylor series of this function around the point z equal to 0. This is convergent for mod z less than 2. Therefore, there exists power series with radius of convergent 2. In this region, this power series is convergent. Where? In this region, the function fz is analytic around the point z equal to 0. Here interesting thing. Consider same function fz equal to 1 over 2 plus z. But 
change the center here consider the center j is equal to 1 then 1 over 2 plus z means since here the center is z equal to 1 therefore for this we have to write this as z minus 1 then we can write this as for this 1 over 2 plus 1 plus z minus 1 and this is equal to 1 over 3 plus z minus 1 and 1 over 3 plus z minus 1 means we can write this as 1 over 3 1 over 1 minus minus z minus 1 over 3 now consider w equal to z minus 1 over 3 obviously similar to before this is the geometric series since here 1 minus minus z minus 1 to the power 1 over 3 we, we have considered this w therefore this is the geometric series 1 over 3 n equal to 0 to infinity minus z minus 1 over 3 over n and this is equal to minus 1 to the power n n equal to 0 to infinity z minus 1 to the power n over 3 to the power n plus 1 that means this is the geometric series z minus 1 over 3 and this is convergent for this is convergent this is less than 1 then this would be absolute value of z minus 1 would be less than 3 so here radius of convergent r equal to 3 therefore if we change the center here i have changed the center then similar function but this function for this center radius of convergence would be different today i will stop here in my next video i will discuss another concept of complex analysis but this type of complex concept would be very useful to understand whole complex analysis briefly. So at first I will highly recommend you please see today's video with pay attention. Okay. See you soon. Stay safe and stay positive always and don't forget to do subscribe my channel for more videos. Thank you so much.